So here you can see Didymos and Dimorphos. The spacecraft is autonomously navigating itself. It is precision locked on the asteroid moonlet, cruising in at a speed of 4,000 miles per second. And now you can see Dimorphos slowly filling the screen. We've never seen this object before. Bullseye. We also have incredible high resolution imagery from DART's Draco camera, which we are now able to show. Here's the asteroid system. Dimorphos filling the field of view. Incredible surface detail of an asteroid seven million miles from Earth that we have never before seen. Absolutely amazing. Some, something for the history books. <clears throat> and, and this is the last frame from the spacecraft before we confirmed loss of signal. I'm joined now by some members from the DART team who have helped turn this incredible first-of-its-kind mission, which honestly sounds like something from a science fiction movie, into science fact. They include Ed Reynolds, DART project manager here at APL, Lena Adams, DART mission systems engineer at APL, Mark Jensenius, DART smart nav guidance engineer at APL, Carolyn Ernst, DART Draco instrument scientist at APL, and Julie Bellarose, DART navigation lead at APL. At, sorry, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. <laughs> we're going to quickly hear some opening remarks from Ed and Lena, and then we're going to take some questions from our media that we have with us here in the room, both at APL and also dialed into our phone bridge. We're going to try and answer as many questions as we have in the limited amount of time, so let's get started. Ed and Lena, tell us, how are you feeling right now? Great and relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I definitely feel relieved. And uh, it, it is absolutely wonderful to do something this amazing. And we are so excited to be yeah. done. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've worked on this mission for at least seven years now, and uh, it's been a work of over a thousand people that have put their heart and soul into it. So to see it so beautifully concluded today was just uh, an incredible feeling. Right. And also very tiring. <laughs> Again, a huge congratulations to you and the entire DART team. Absolutely amazing history has been made today. We're now going to take a few questions from the media. For folks in the room with us here, if you have a question, please make your way to one of the microphones in the aisles and state your name and affiliation. And for anyone dialed into our phone bridge, please press star one to be entered into the queue. Hello, thank you. Uh, Tarek Malik with uh, Space.com, I think, for Elena or whomever would like to do it. You mentioned, uh, or Ed described the feeling as absolute joy. And I'm just curious, I mean, there were a lot of celebrations that we saw actually here. There was screaming and chanting just all the way down. Uh, I'm just curious, of those last minutes, five minutes in, where you were all hands off, what that atmosphere was like. And then what Dimorphos, your first thoughts about seeing it up close with those boulders and crags and, and shadows uh, is like. Thank you. So I'll say a couple of words and then I'll give it over to the rest of the team, especially to Carolyn, to talk more about the surface of the <laughs> Dimorphos. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but um, definitely, as we were getting close to the asteroid, there was a lot of, Ed said joy, I say both terror and joy at the same time, because we, we saw that we were going to impact. We this asteroid was coming into the field of view for the first time. We really had no idea what to expect. We didn't really know the shape of the asteroid, but we knew we were going to hit. So I think all of us were kind of holding our breaths. I'm kind of surprised none of us passed out, actually, <laughs> for a second there. But, um, but at the end, you know, I mean, me personally, I felt a little numb. Like, yes, we were celebrating, there was a lot of joy, but you also feel a little numb that all of this, you know, so much so many years of work are right. now complete. Yeah. And so that expectation of what's next is, uh, but there's a lot of next things going on for DART, so I'll let you guys talk about that. Yeah, I was going to say that these guys, their job is done. 
but ours is just beginning. So I've been lucky enough to be kind of embedded with the engineering team and watching them all here plan and test and work together. And Draco, of course, was built here at APL. So seeing it come from plans all the way to something that took such amazing pictures was awesome. These guys were all standing up in those last two minutes because they were hands off and looking. And I was like this far from my screen looking at the amazing pictures come in because they're just outstanding. Um, and I saw them come in at the same time as everybody here saw them come in. So, you know, we will spend the next months and years doing analysis, of course. Um, our job has just started, but it really looks just amazing. It looks, it's like adorable. It's this little moon. It's so cute. Um, it looks in a lot of ways like some of the other small asteroids we've seen. You know, if you remember, we've seen Bennu and Ryugu recently through NASA and Japanese Space Agency missions, and they are also covered in boulders. So we suspect it is likely to be a rubble pile, kind of loosely consolidated. Um, Didymos, which you saw leaving the frame, I almost wanted to watch it more. You know, yeah. obviously we want to hit, but I was like, oh, look at that, so cool. It has maybe craters and boulders and smooth patches. And so there's a lot of work that the um, proxim proximity working group will be doing over the next few days. Um, we will be finding the exact impact site to really understand, you know, what kind of crater did we make? Um, and of course, the, the ground-based observers are busy as we speak, you know, looking at the data and taking it over the course of the next um, days and weeks to find out what we really did.